Okay, now, yes, now we are live. Okay. <laughs> Hop a day, Piro, and welcome to Mariana's Stories. I'm Catherine Perry, and this is where we chat with ordinary people with extraordinary stories in our community. Our guest today is one of the many workers that help support our Mariana's tourism industry, and he has over four decades. I thought it was three decades, but it's four decades of uh, service in the food and beverage industry. Arnell, better known as Neil Mitron. Neil, thank yes. you for making time in your busy schedule and welcome to the show. Thank you, Kat, thank you. I was really surprised when you told me that <laughs> we will be doing this. I said, wow, it's an opportunity to share uh, the knowledge and uh, what I have learned in hospitality to you know, the, to the, the cinema people and the youth especially. I think a lot of people will recognize your face because you've worked at Hyatt and now here at the lovely Aqua Resort for three years. But how did you get started in the food and beverage industry? Well, I started food and beverage industry or, or hospitality since I was in college. And that was 1983 back to those years. And then I was at the Hyatt Regency Baguio those days. Wow. The most beautiful hotel in the Philippines before. Okay. That was uh, Hyatt Regency Baguio. And the make me more interested here is you met a lot of people that you don't easily met normally in your life. But in hotel industry, you can see them just right there and then most especially those presidents in the Philippines that I met before. Wow. Starting with uh, President Ferdinand Marcos, then piloted by Corazon Aquino, Fidel V. Ramos, uh, Joseph Estrada. I met all of them and it's a good opportunity that we, we are in Hyatt, we serve them as well. So those, those, that's, the, that's the time that I started my hotel life in the industry. Now, you didn't actually study this in college. This is not what you were planning to do. What did you study and why did you decide to pursue this field? Yeah, this is not my, uh, my uh, degree that I took in place, but I was a supporting student before. I helped myself to study and I go to school and I work in the evening. So that's how I get into it. And I was a civil engineering student those days. Civil engineer. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> so how did you end up in, in Saipan? You well, came here 30 years ago, actually. That's correct. Yeah. How did you end up here? Well, uh, some agencies in Philippines before when I'm uh, seeking a job abroad, and I see Saipan on advertisements, so I go to that agency and apply for it. And I was lucky enough to uh, uh, selected to be coming over in Saipan in mm -hmm. uh, 1991. That's March 8th, I remember the date. <laughs> yeah. Was it what you expected before you came when you finally got here? When I come here, because my uh, plot is from Manila to Guam, then Guam to Saipan. So, personally, on those days, when I see Guam, I said, yes, I'm in a stage in a U.S. property. <laughs> but when I come to Saipan, is this, I said, is this Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> really funny because uh, I, 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 I thought, I was you in... thought you went back home. <laughs> right, that's correct. <laughs> this is this Philippines. <laughs> that's really the funny those days because Saipan those days, 1991, is still, you know, uh, uh, it's like the the place is still very uh, not developed. Mm -hmm. And I was in Saipan until become this island become a uh, uh, developed place. Uh, there's a lot of changes since then to now. Mm -hmm. for uh, 30 years yeah even the road remember the road those days it's not like that yet <laughs> there's no traffic light yeah. a lot of the roads were not even paved that's correct the, there's a lot big changes in Saipan mm. for, for 30 years yeah. about food and and beverage service um, 
What do you think has changed the most since when you started? Or what changes have, do you recall being big changes uh, during your career? Well, back to 1991 where I started here in Saipan, I worked as a bartender in La Mex, which is a Mexican restaurant before. In those days, my uh, employer is a Japanese and they don't allow us to go out uh, after work, even at night time. Mm -hmm. They are very protective to their employees. Employee. Mm -hmm. And then, 1993 or 1992, I discovered that there is an hotel here. <laughs> oh my goodness, it took you a whole year? Yes, oh, that's right. really serious because we cannot, we, they don't allow us to go out. Wow. So, when I discovered that there's a hotel here, and first time, the first thing that I see is aqua and then this ha, hotel okay. this hotel okay and then Hyatt when I went to Hyatt I see my old co-employees that wow. they're working in there wow. then I approached my former boss which is Ramon Cabrera he is my f &B manager before and I went to him and I said sir good morning can I join again in your team yeah. and he accepted me that was 1993, August 16, I remember the date when I started Hyatt until I worked in Hyatt for 24 years, back to those days. Mm -hmm. It was a very good experience in Hyatt. Hyatt is a very good place to work with because the training that they give you, the coaching that they give you, the mentoring that they give you, it's really valuable to each employee who are interested in this industry because Hyatt trainings, we are being trained coming from uh, one of the most famous university in the States, which is Harvard. We do our training online from Harvard and we, uh, we take examination after the, after the training. And if you don't pass that exam, you have to retake again until you, feel, until you succeed. Have you passed all of your exams on the first I, try? I, uh, no, no, <laughs> I did it twice or twice. <laughs> okay, Seriously. at least you're honest. Yes. Well, yeah. the good news is all of that training and preparation and your hard, determined, hard work and determination paved the way for you to now be the F&B manager here at Aqua Resort Club. So congratulations on that. Thank you, Kat. Yes. Actually, when I started Hyatt in 1993, I was a, a wait staff and then I became a supervisor, become assistant manager, become a restaurant manager in all restaurants in Hyatt. I stepped up the ladder from the bottom to up and then to Aqua, they accept me as their uh, food and beverage manager, which is I'm happy for it because uh, uh, I run the show my own and I know people love to talk or mingle in, in uh, certain places here in Aqua and yeah, that's how uh, we worked before and then. <laughs> what do you find most rewarding about this kind of work? The most uh, rewarding about this kind of work was it is a good opportunity for you to be in the hotel industry, most, uh, most especially, uh, you, like I said before, you met people that you don't ordinarily meet in your daily life. Like what I experienced in Hyatt, I met uh, the Karate Kid guy. Uh, Ralph? No, uh, the Japanese guy. Oh, hey, uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi. 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 I don't know the actor's name. I, I, I don't know the actor's but I know him, Wax Mr. On, Miyagi. Right. Okay. I met him twice in the Hyatt. Really? I served him at Giovanni's. Yeah. And I met a lot of NBA players in Hyatt. Uh, also, uh, the, more, the famous football player from England, they come over to Hyatt. And of course, our governor from the uh, time of uh, Larry Guerrero, Froilan Tenorio, um, Pete Tenorio, uh, Pete Tial, 
who else? The governor, I, I governor see. Governor Babalta. Governor Babaota. Governor uh, Inos. Yeah, Inos. Of course, the uh, Ralph Torres, and the present uh, Governor Palacios. Mm. So back to those days. I also the, the most important another one that I had in mind was the the princess of Dubai come to Saipan. That was 19 or 20. I believe 2013, and I was I am personally communicating with her to come in Saipan without knowing of my bosses, even my GM. I did not tell because it's a top secret from them. How did you have a connection with the Princess of Dubai? They emailed me. Someone I don't know. Sometimes email come up, and then I reply back. Of course, we are in hospitality. We have to take care. We have to look. And then this, they told me that this is confidential. So I booked them in the hotel. I only informed my GM on the day that he arriving here. So they have a private jet coming from Dubai to Guam, Guam to Saipan. Right in front of me was Tina Sablan. She was the reporter before. And she asked me, Neil, who is the princess of Dubai? I heard he's coming over here. And without her knowledge, right in front of her is the princess of Dubai. I didn't even tell her. The princess <laughs> I, was actually there. There, nearby. right. Oh, okay. And I, I cannot say that to... to yeah. uh, so what did you say? What did you tell the... I just tell uh, Tina before that I said, uh, yeah, I know she's coming, but uh, maybe later on. <laughs> and then, after then, I approached Tina when the princess of Dubai left. We went up to the room. I said, Tina, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you. Yeah. I know you're a reporter, yeah. but the princess of Dubai is just beside you before. Oh. <laughs> she really loved. <laughs> so if meeting famous people is the highlight, right. what's the most difficult part of the job? You know, because there's long hours, right? I know. You got to wake up early mm -hmm. or go to bed late, Right. weekends, holidays. The most difficult thing on this job is once there's a complaint, one, once there is a guest fighting together, you never know what being, being uh, they're agreeing at. And then you have to go in and make them come and make them, you know, uh, talk to each other nicely. Have you ever had to break up a fight? I did. More than once? Yes. How do you handle that? That's my secret how to handle it. What's your secret? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> give them, a, give them your nice smile. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, I experienced that in Hyatt when I was in Hyatt, and both guests are really, you know, in argument, and they approached me, and uh, those days, one of my assistant managers said, "Mr. Neil, I see you. Your face is really red, but you're still smiling, and you make those guests come down." Yes, I did that okay. for real. So uh, I said the only secret thing in this uh, uh, career as hotelier, be patience. Make sure that you have that much long patience. Patience, and, okay. Yes, and uh, just act normal. Smile so you don't get old. <laughs> right. Right. So patience is an important quality. That's correct. For people. After like 40 years working at a job, um, it's very possible that like you actually become like the job or whatever you have to do. I mean, that's a lot of hours in your life you do this work. How do you think this work has developed you or impacted you as a person? The first thing I did is I have to get my wives yes that i am committed because i'm happy doing on my uh, on, on my on my job so uh, when my wife says yes then i say thank you then they need to understand your partner need to understand need to support you on how is your work hours no questions as as long as in your job mm -hmm. rather than go somewhere else and drink and whatever that you can do uh, um, not good so yeah when I get her answer yes I thank her because she supported me and uh, being 
in the situation of long hours every day, I used to eat already. Like, like I wake up 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, come to work, and then go home like 12 o'clock in the midnight, wow. <laughs> or sometimes 11. Yeah. The, our hours is no, uh, no limitation. As long, for me, as long as the event is done in a nice, uh, <clears throat> in a nice uh, handling, mm -hmm. and there is no complaint, I, I feel very uh, happy. Especially if I see the engager are happy, and the most important thing, they spread the word. Go to this place; they'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And they're coming back mm -hmm. to do the, another event, mm -hmm. which is very good for the for the company that we're working with. Mm. Yeah. You make me think. Um, you know, you guys are here. You. Um, are here to like make it easy for the people who want to come and avail of the food and the drink and the services that you provide. What advice would you give to people, for example, who want to have a banquet or who come to the restaurant to also work with you? Because you're trying so hard to work with us. <laughs> <laughs> what are like the top one or two pet peeves you have or requests you have? This is the time to let us know, like, guys, help me out. What, yeah. what would you say? What would you ask? Well, that, that's, it's just like uh, some of the politicians here in Saipan, they observe me here in Aqua, when I am hiring most of the students, we have all the students from the Northern, Northern Maria Islands, uh, Northern Mariana College, plus we have the students from uh, Mariana Science School. Mm -hmm. I am giving them a chance to learn and prepare themselves on how they become a good and better man bef uh, after yeah. when they get old or to the age of their adults already. I am sharing them my experience because I was a working student before and I would like them to know and learn from there. And when they reach to the top, put your feet on the ground. Do not, you know, step up that you're already up there and you look like somebody, no. I said, no, don't do that. That's not correct. And I really love students working with me because they are easy people to follow your rules they are very easy to handle and guide them because they don't haven't learned any bad habits yet correct so, yeah yeah correct you get to but, teach them all right. the right way besides from that once they uh, learn it and you non-stop coaching mentoring them telling them whatever even, even a simple mistake tap them on the back bring them on the other side which nobody can see you and give him the right way uh, how it should be done, but do not do not embarrass them in front of everybody, even the, your co-workers. But bring them somewhere else, which nobody can see you. And that kind of uh, coaching is they they learn at least you know when they go to uh, college or somewhere else in university, they still remember. Oh, this is how I learned from Aqua. This is what I they did to me in Aqua. Something that, uh, something that uh, it comes to their memory, mm -hmm. that it will never uh, uh, lost from their memory. Yeah. They will bring it up all the way until they, they had their family, right? That's a really nice thought. It's like, um, you know, we can also, as customers, can also work with these young people you know, being patient with them, understanding that they're still learning the ropes, you know, they're going to make mistakes, but uh, helping them also as they start their career or their, their work life and being patient and supportive of them. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned your family. You mentioned your wife a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your family and you actually have some good news related mm -hmm. to your family. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, Right now, I'm alone in Saipan. They're all in Guam. And I have three kids, and my kids are all done. Uh, one is uh, my, my uh, daughter, she graduated uh, Air Force, for, uh, training Air Force. For after that, she joined the United Airlines as a flight stewardess. 
And then my younger one is in Hyatt, Guam. He also graduated a culinary. And the oldest is also graduated culinary. Okay. They follow my steps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't follow their mom's steps. Yeah. And um, I understand that you are actually leaving us here in Saipan. Oh, my heart is still here. Oh. <laughs> That's what I promised to Aqua. I will help them. Neil is actually, after all these years, finally going to be able to go be <laughs> with his family again. And you're leaving Saipan next week? Yes. On the, okay, next week, next week. Um, could you share any words of advice or encouragement to people who maybe they're already just starting in this industry or they're interested in this industry? would after and I'm sure you still have many years ahead of you but after four decades what could you what would you tell them well being a hotel worker starting from the bottom to up uh, it there is a lot there's a lot of challenges that you encounter don't give up pursue your goal Make sure that every year you have something on your mind to set a goal, to make that goal be positive, and you make sure that you reach that goal that you are looking for. Those days I said, I'll be happy if I'm only a supervisor. And after that, I was assistant manager. And after that, another step on the position. Then another one, I said, those challenges, just do accept them as a challenge for you and do your best do not uh, uh how should i say it do not uh i'll make a plan plan your plan plan your goal make sure that that goal you got a time frame to get that goal for yourself and uh time when the time runs and you do you never know you're already there right and patience Patience, patience. That's the long patience that you need. And make sure you enjoy your work. If you don't enjoy your work, then I cannot do anything with that. As long as you're enjoying it, then do it. As long as you're happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I personally want to thank you for your time today for this chat. And also, we've had the opportunity to work together in the past. and. All the people that you've served here in Saipan um, and for being a part of our Saipan family. And um, I want to give you the chance for any closing thoughts you might have before we go. Thank you, Kat, for the opportunity that uh, you come here and do this interview, which I'm so glad and happy. I was really surprised when you emailed me. And that's why I said, I, oh, I will prepare some notes. <laughs> Which you did not even look at. That's great. And then, uh, yeah, many times as I, I always use myself as an example to those who are students working with me before and whoever uh, would like to be in this uh, uh, career as a hotelier. Don't ignore yourself as a wait stop. It is your profession, it is a profession. Do not make sure you yourself as uh, or look at yourself as downgraded no it is a preparation because that you will be starting at like i said there's a very good opportunity and take that challenge like on my part i even see michael jackson before because of this work i even see serve chuck norris because of this work so those kind those or oh, those uh, famous people that you cannot see in in uh, in your regular days, but you can see them once in a while in those special or big events. And the most important thing, once you are engaged in the hotel, you can try and eat all the food that you like in the hotel, which is you cannot afford in one day, right? <laughs> you cannot afford to, to buy that. But in the hotel, you are there every day. You can try and eat that. <laughs> 
and eat That's all of this. That's a good recruitment point. Like, if you want to eat good food, get into F&B at the hotel. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. What's the weirdest thing you've ever had at the Adam? <laughs> at work. See cucumber? I know some of the hotels have served sea cucumber right, in the past. Right. Not from Saipan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Expensive steak? Come to work in the hotel and you can try that. Honestly. Expensive lobster? Whatever name it, you have it in the hotel. Because you work in the hotel, you work in the food industry, and you need to try it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kat. And we really wish you the best uh, in, in Guam. And don't forget to come back for a visit. Of course I will. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Our guest today has been Neil Mitran. He's been working in the food and beverage industry here in, in Saipan for 30 years, now heading off to the next chapter in his adventure in Guam. This has been Mariana Stories. I'm Catherine Perry.